Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the configuring chassis cluster IP and interface monitoring with JWeb Learning Byte. All right, so here's the example. I want to point out a few things. We have VSRX1 and VSRX2 as members of the chassis cluster. VSRX1 is node 0. VSRX2 is node 1. We currently have two redundancy groups set up. Redundancy group 1 houses wreath 0, and wreath 0 has Gigi003 and Gigi703 as its child interfaces. And redundancy group 2 has wreath 1, which has Gigi004 and Gigi704 as its child interfaces. So those redundancy groups are set up, things are working, user one can access stuff on the internet, like the internet server. However, we don't have any form of interface monitoring or IP address monitoring, which means if there's some sort of failure scenario, the traffic will not fail over to the secondary node. It won't fail over to node one if there's a failure situation. So we want to guard against that. The first criteria that we have is that if the 10.11.11.2 IP address, which is the default gateway for the cluster going to the internet, if that address is unreachable, we want traffic to fail over to Gigi703 in the wreath 0 interface. And then with redundancy group 2, which the wreath 1 interface is a part of, if Gigi004 experiences an, a link down state for that interface, we want to fail traffic over to the secondary node, which is VSRX2. So let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface and configure this. So here is the JWeb interface. We first want to go to chassis cluster, then cluster configuration, and note that we are under the configure workspace. And here's the node settings, and then we need to go to the HA cluster settings, and then we need to edit the redundancy groups. So with redundancy group one, now remember this is the redundancy group that points towards the internet and has wreath zero. With this redundancy group, we want to edit it and we want to set up some IP monitoring. Now note that you can configure IP monitoring and interface monitoring at the same time within the same redundancy group. But here we're not gonna worry about that. We're just going to focus on configuring IP monitoring for one redundancy group and interface monitoring for the other redundancy group. So let's go ahead and get started. We specify a weight. We can specify a weight of 255. Now this is the weight that will be subtracted from the redundancy group priority value. For example, node zero is set at a priority of 200. Node one is set at a priority of 100. You know, if there's a failure situation, we would subtract 255 from 200, which you know obviously brings us down to zero. Can't get lower than zero there. And so that will cause a priority switch or a mastership switch to happen and node one will take mastership and will be the primary for that redundancy group. And so we need to set a threshold and we can just set that to 200. And I'll explain what that is here in a minute. Set a retry count of five, retry interval of one. And then we scroll down a little more. We need to specify the information about what needs to be monitored. We have first the IP. We need to specify the 10.11.11.2 IP address. We'll give that a weight of 255. And what that does there is if the weight is higher than the threshold limit, then it subtracts the overall weight that we specified earlier. So keep that in mind. Now we specify the interface of wreath 0.0. .0. And then the secondary IP address. This is important because this is what we're going to be sending the keep alives from. It sends ICMP packets and we need to specify an IP address. And we can specify, we're going to specify 10.11.11.3. And I found here that if you specify an IP address that is in use, such as the wreath interface address, then it creates some problems. So it's best to specify a second or a separate address. And we're going to specify the 10.11.11.3 here, which isn't used. And we're going to have to do some special things with that. And I'll talk about that later. And then we can click the Add button. And we can click OK. Click OK again. And then so with Redundancy Group 2, we want to set up some interface monitoring. Click on the interface monitor. We want to specify interface Gigi004. Add a weight. We're going to say 255. Now this weight is a little different than what we configured with IP monitoring. This weight will just be subtracted from the priority value of the primary node. So 255 will definitely subtract enough to bring it below the priority level of node 1. Then click the Add button and click OK and click OK again. Now we do need to do one other quick thing. Remember that I said when we configured the IP 
monitoring part for redundancy group one that we use that 10.11.11.3 address that isn't used anywhere else, we need to set up proxy ARP so the SRX device will actually respond and can use that 10.11.11.3 address. So we do that under security, NAT, proxy ARP slash ND workspace. Click the add button, select proxy ARP. And we select the interface. We want to select interface wreath 0.0. .0. And then we want to specify that new IP address. Click the add button and click OK. And click OK again. And then we're going to commit configuration. Then let's jump to the user one device and start a continuous ping that will show if we lose any traffic with a switchover. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so here is the user one device. Let's start that ping. Now we're pinging the internet server. Let's go ahead and jump back to the JWeb interface. Okay, here's the JWeb interface again. Let's go to the monitor workspace. Then let's go to security, flow session, and then let's search for ICMP packets. Do a search. Okay, here we can see that node zero has some traffic going through it as expected. And if we switch over to node one and do a search, we can see there's nothing on node one. So we'll jump back to node zero and do a search again. So I do want to jump back to the diagram just to point out a few things before I start causing issues in our test bed that will cause traffic to fail over. Okay, so here's the topology again. And the thing I want to point out is with the wreath zero interface, which is in redundancy group one, we're going to cause a problem that will happen just right above where VSRX1 connects into the provider network. So there's going to be a problem, and this is going to be you know, a situation where there could be provider owned equipment with a switch interface. And so there's going to be a problem right in that area right there, which is going to be out of our control. This is where IP monitoring works great because this won't cause the Gigi003 interface to go down, but it will cause the path from Gigi003 to the 10.11.11.2 interface, which is the default gateway, to not be reachable. So we're going to do that, cause a problem there, and then with the Gigi004 interface, the switch that it's connected to, we're going to bring that interface down, which will cause the failover to happen because Gigi004 will transition to the link down state. So just wanted to point that out. So what I'm gonna do right now is on another screen, I'm just going to bring down those interfaces and then we'll see what happens. We'll examine the traffic flow. Okay, so I've restricted the traffic flow. And so let's go ahead and jump back to the JWeb interface and take a look to see how the flows have changed. Okay, so here is the JWeb interface. Let's click search again. Okay, so we can see there's nothing here for node zero. We can click search again. There's nothing, that's great. Go to node one, click search. And we have the traffic going through no one. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. So that brings us to the end of this learning bite. Uh, we discussed chassis cluster IP and interface monitoring, and we demonstrated how to set up chassis cluster IP and interface monitoring using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses, learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths, Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence, and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.